Welcome to the final segment of Durham TV Viewer Questions Week for March 2013. Today's episode will feature questions from DurhamTV.com viewers. Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and welcome to Durham TV. Today's first question comes from Daria, and she asks, Hi, Dr. Schultz. Can I use regular moisturizer after I've just used 10% glycolic gel for the night? Daria, you certainly can. After your glycolic gel uh, dries and sets, which shouldn't take more than a half a minute or a minute, you can use a moisturizer, you can use an antioxidant, you can use any other skincare products that you like after a glycolic product, um, just as long as the product is uh, heavier than the glycolic product and not lighter, just because you want to layer your skincare products in order of their viscosity or weight. But it shouldn't do anything to make your glycolic product not work. Second question comes from Mary, and she says, Hi, Dr. Schultz. My question is about oral antibiotics for the treatment of cystic acne. How long should it take to start seeing a reduction in cystic acne lesions? I've been taking 100 milligrams of minocycline a day for three weeks now, and while I've noticed improvement in overall appearance, many of the cysts have not reduced in size. Should I be considering Accutane at this point? Well, first of all, Mary, uh, 100 milligrams of minocycline a day may not be enough. You may need to be taking 200 milligrams a day, which we consider to be a full dose. Three weeks is enough time to see a difference. So if at three weeks you're not getting a meaningful improvement, meaning a meaningful reduction, 30-40% reduction in the number of new cysts, uh, during which time, of course, the old cysts should be healing. But if you're not getting that meaningful reduction in the new cysts, then it's time either for a change in dose or a change in antibiotic. And since I think you may be on only a half dose, unless um, you weigh very little, it might be time to consider going up to 150 or 200 milligrams of minocycline. In terms of when do we go to Accutane, um, usually it's not after one antibiotic, but after two or three antibiotics haven't worked, that's when it's time to start thinking about going to Accutane. But uh, for the time being, I'm not sure you've gotten the full value out of your minocycline. Eleanor G. asks, I use a cream that's supposed to purify the skin. I had acne after using the saleswoman, um, after using the cream, and the saleswoman told me that this is normal because this is how the impurities get out of the skin. Is this true? Eleanor, your skin should never get worse before it gets better with a new skincare product. So I don't believe that a product really gets impurities out of your skin, and that should cause you to get worse. You should never get worse after you start using a new product, and if you do, I don't think that product's for you. Joe asks, does haircut make your hair grow faster and thicker? Joe, cutting your hair doesn't make your hair grow faster, and it certainly doesn't make it thicker, because if it did, as a result of getting haircuts during your life, you'd have this big, thick, bushy thing you couldn't control. I'll tell you what it does do, though. Cutting the hair, if the hair has never been cut before, well, your hair normally has a tapered, wispy tip. So the tip of a, no, of a virgin hair that's never been cut is, is much finer than um, the rest of the hair shaft. But when you cut the hair, you're cutting across the shaft, which has a consistent diameter as that hair starts to grow. Now the end of that hair is really the diameter of the hair shaft, not that wispy tip. So the ends of cut hair tend to look a little thicker or a little coarser than virgin hairs that have never been cut. But it doesn't really make your hair thicker. It just makes the tips appear thicker because the t these new tips are the same cross-section as the diameter of the hair shaft. So there's no problem with cutting your hair, and um, it actually doesn't make it grow any faster. I wish it did. Lillian asks, is it safe to remove a mole using garlic? Lillian, that's really two questions. The first question is, is it safe to remove a mole? And the answer is never. And the second question is, can you use garlic to remove a mole? And I don't think so. But the reality is, and the reason I have chosen this question to answer, is you should never, ever 
try to remove your own mole, regardless of what you're using. Moles, of course, um, are uh, composed of lots and lots of melanin cells. Moles are where many melanomas come from. Anytime a mole is removed, it needs to be sent to the laboratory to be inspected and make sure that it wasn't a precancerous mole. Because if it was a precancerous mole, or God forbid a cancerous mole, and it's not removed completely, then you risk having that uh, precancerous or cancerous mole become much worse and become much more harmful without your having any signal that there's anything bad going on. So please don't ever try to remove your own mole. And in terms of garlic, um, I actually prefer it with cooking. Our last question for today um, comes from Jessica and she says, Hi, I love tanning and tanning beds because of the bronze glow it gives me. Only I know it's not good, period. Too bad we can't just stop the question there because we're all in agreement that tanning beds aren't good. I only tan three days in a row a month. Is that okay? Jessica, no, it's not okay. You shouldn't be going to tanning salons. You shouldn't be going to tanning booths. Anytime your skin gets tan, anytime it gets darkened, that darkening, that tan means your skin has been damaged. There is a virtual epidemic melanoma in the United States in females, in Caucasian females between the ages of 15 and 39 as a result of their use of tanning beds. The only safe tan is a tan that comes out of a bottle. Please, I know that it feels good, I know that you think it looks good, but please don't go to tanning booths. Whether it's uh, three days in a row a month or one day, just say no to tanning beds and to tanning salons. So that's it for this month's Viewer Questions Week. And don't forget, the subjects from so many Derm TV episodes come from your questions, which are great. So please keep sending them in, and I'll keep answering as many of them as I can. Please join me again at DermTV.com. If you have a question, please send it to me by visiting DermTV.com slash question. I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and thank you for watching today.